guys, welcome to this um, advanced redstone logic gate tutorial, and this will be on a 1-bit multiplexer, and these are used in, um, in uh, ALUs to make CPUs um, to uh, do different operations, so one combination will say add, and the other combination will be maybe subtract, but um, I'll just show you the gate. So you're going to put two blocks like that, and you're going to make a T, and put wire there and then put a torch on the other side of these on either one and then this one goes to an output and so does this one which is also inverted again so we're essentially we have a repeater right here but we're going to do something that makes it into the gate in a second this is, will be the output now um, this is A, this is B I had to put another block here. Sorry, that's three. So it's a tall T. And then on the top is C. So we'll put blocks here to prevent a short from happening. And then this wire will go, um, and it will run directly into A. And then it will be inverted into B. And now I'll just get rid of any unnecessary blocks. I think that's it. So uh, I'm going to get some levers and explain how this works. I'll label the um, outputs real quick, or the inputs real quick. There's A, there's B, and here's C. And the output, of course, is O. OK, so the way this works is by default, A will control the output. So if I turn A on, O will be on. It'll also turn off, obviously, but B will do nothing. Now, what C is for, this is the control. This controls which input works. So if I put C on, A will then do nothing, and B will control the output. And this is useful for um, controlling. Uh, I, I thought of a quite practical use, maybe. Um, you're in, say you're in a control room and you're um, you're watching over like people entering doors or something like say for a stadium and um, you you can control uh, whether people coming in can open the door or people going out can open the door so like your out your out input going out of the door would be B your in input would be A and you would have control of C so you could decide who goes in or who goes out not the most practical use in the world, but um, this is for computers anyway, so you're not going to find too many um, practical uses for it. But that's the design. There's a smaller way to do this, and I'll show you that. This is just my way of doing it um, to show for easy interpretation, so it's easy to understand. But this is the very small version, I think. Oh, no, wait. Is it? I think it might be. No, one of the one of these two is wrong. I think this is the right one. So I'll make this real quick. If you want to instead use this design, because it's slightly smaller. So we're just gonna make this, and then add some blocks here. And the only different thing about this is C is on top. So here's A, this is C, and um, this is C's input into A, this is C's input into B. And then here's where we connect the two. And then here's the input to B. So um, A should control the output. Oh, wait a second. Did I do something wrong? Oh, C is on. That's right. So B would control the output. But no, right now, C is off, so A controls the output, as you can see. And then if we put C on, B will then control the output. And there you go.
radio that's the contact radio.